Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad you joined us today to stay curious. Today on, it's uh, Wednesday, February 7th, 2024, we're going to celebrate three space shuttles that were launched on the same day, February 3rd, but of course years apart, with some African-American astronauts on board so we can celebrate February is African is Black History Month here in America. So we're going to profile a couple of those. We got a couple current events, and I've got my buddy Marty Winkle on the board here to help me with some of those current events today. Marty, how you doing? Doing good, Mark. How are you? Well, I have been very busy today. Of course, uh, doing things outside of Stay Curious every day. Privilege to have a lunch with the what they call the good old boys and girls bunch of nasa uh retired workers most of them from the public information office hugh harris who passed away about a year ago uh, started inviting me to that so i had a good lunch with astronaut jim adamson our good friend john tribe was there uh who's an apollo legend of his knowledge of hypergolics um, jay honeycutt there former center director and very important influencer at Johnson Space Center during his tenures there. Uh, so great day. Come in here and have to look up, uh, get a program together. So we're going to let it just fly today a little bit. But we've got, I think, put something interesting together for everybody to enjoy. We also want to let everybody know that to keep our doors open, we need your financial support. So there's our beautiful front of our permanent building here that houses artifacts that you're never going to see anywhere else. And of course, you can go to our website and uh, go up to the donate button or participate in things that we're offering uh, coming up here this month, a memorabilia show a week from Saturday at Beachside Hotel. We'll be talking about that starting tomorrow and um, auctions coming up almost once a month. Hope you that you got an autograph auction. Uh, autograph from our auction last Saturday. I know John Borelli's watching today and he's scored a couple nice autographs. And uh, so you never know what the prices are going to be. Uh, this would have been a good auction to get you some good affordable autographs. And we'll do that again soon with our Bid Again Auctions uh, warehouse run by Chuck Jeffrey, an expert in that memorabilia. Black History Month, uh, by my recollection, there's 16 African Americans that have gone to space. Uh, of course, uh, the first one being Guy Bluford in uh, uh, 1983. Uh, the most recent ones are Victor Glover and Jessica Watkins went to the space station. Victor Glover has been chosen as a pilot for the Artemis Two mission that's going to circle the moon, actually pass by the moon, hopefully uh, within the next year and a half. They're, they're looking at November 2025 for that, quite possibly. So we've got a couple uh, African-American astronauts that made flights this month, or not this, yeah, this month, uh, and we're going to uh, profile a couple of them coming up here. But uh, first we've got seven, uh, we have 14 astronauts orbiting the Earth right now. Here's four of them, seven on the International Space Station, uh, left three Chinese. They undocked uh, this morning around 9 o'clock. Here's the picture of the crew dragon called Freedom, the second time it's been to space, undocking. And uh, the social media is kind of up and down with when they're going to come back. Marty, I had you look that up for me. Tell us when they're, the, these four astronauts are coming back on our UCAC family microphone there. Well, the plans as of, uh, as of late is they should be landing at 8.30 Friday morning off the coast of uh, Daytona Beach. Oh, okay. Over in the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, that'll be interesting to see if we can see anything of that as they streak by uh, that's pretty close to so close to Daytona Beach, not up by Jacksonville, huh? All right, Marty. Cool. He looked at it. They're good. Well, uh, they spent an extra two days up there going to spend on the International Space Station. Looks like they're going to spend an extra day orbiting the Earth. So we hope that all the life support system works just 
fine and they enjoy some sightseeing around our globe there undocked uh eight o'clock eight thirty this morning i think it's around nine there's the thin blue line below them there the only border that should matter is that thin blue line taken out a window of the international space station and i grabbed this off the the um internet just a little bit ago well if you're a baby boomer like me and grew up in the 60s it was so amazing every time a mission went to the moon orbited the earth it was big headlines because all those were breaking ground like had never been done before and i'll never forget uh as as a young uh, boy in 1966 uh, actually a teenager by then on february 3rd 1966 luna 9 was the first object to land on the moon and here's an artist's conception of it uh, luna 9 actually didn't it said they soft landed but it was a controlled impact the controlled impact came from in this artist rendering you see at the top is the actual vehicle that had the thruster on it that that slowed it down to be able to eject this ball with pedals on it for stabilization those weren't solar panels it had a battery on board that lasted about two days so uh it unfurled a couple antenna and sat there actually it bounced on the moon maybe a couple times uh, uh we'll, we'll, it'll take human beings going there to stand beside it to figure it all out exactly uh, but then it took the first photograph ever taken from the surface of the moon and here it is uh, on a early morning, you would call it, with the strong shadows. Uh, so the beach ball-sized spacecraft rolled on the surface. The pedals opened up to upright it for its radio transmitter and photos for the first time from another world. Whoop, got ahead of myself there, again, to look at that. And it also threw out, when those pedals opened up, a bunch of uh, medallions that uh, you could buy a... Uh, similar medallion that uh, was struck here but didn't wasn't carried to the moon the russians were always throwing out their calling card and it was mostly uh, medallions not and they were uh, hexagonal shaped medallions not circular coin shaped there it is the first picture of the moon actually two pictures put together up at the top of it it had a little camera the only radiate the only scientific instrument on luna 9 was a radiation detector that detected 30 millirads a day of radiation from the sun so operated for three days and then the batteries went dead well as we look at a beautiful shot of apollo 14 as it left the earth on january 31st it's headed back in space history now in 1971 53 years ago and just always want to keep that fresh in your mind just six successful landings on the moon and apollo 14 is one of them the last really mission that was primitive in a sense because then 15 16 and 17 the j missions they called them had lunar rover and camped out on the moon for three days and did a lot of science we're going to talk about the shuttles of february uh 11 shuttles of february were launched uh in we love profiling their, their missions, but three space shuttles were launched on February 3rd in history, and they include many firsts involving 17 astronauts. These missions, of course, at the top were STS-41B Challenger in 1984, STS-60 Discovery in 1994, and STS-63 Discovery in 1995. So Discovery launched twice on this February 3rd date, uh, this week in space history. Among the records set was the first American fly around of the Russian Mir space station. Uh, of course, participating in that on STS 63 was Eileen Collins, the first, uh, uh, the first female pilot. You also had the first African American spacewalker, which occurred on 41B, the first untethered spacewalks, which were also on 41B and the first refurbished satellite to return to return to space. Uh, I believe they did that on STS-60. The first two Russians to ride a shuttle, and the first shuttle to land at Kennedy Space Center, and we're going to see pictures of that from our good friend Mark Usiak. Hope you're watching today, Mark. Mark. So, 
Let's look at a couple of these as we always love to look at the missions and look at the uh, mission logo. And so let's take a look at STS-41B, the fourth flight of Challenger, the 10th overall, launched 8 a.m. February 3rd, 1984. Uh, and it was led by Apollo Soyuz Test Project astronaut Vance Brand and piloted by rookie Hoot Gibson. The Space Shuttle Challenger on this artwork is making its fourth space flight, highlighted in the insignia here. It's shown with wheels down to mark the first landing scheduled for Kennedy Space Center. And astronaut uh, uh, fl uh, uh, Challenger is flanked by an illustration of a PAMD assist satellite deployment. Now the PAM is the at the bottom, and that is a solid rocket motor that boosts the satellite up to geosynchronous orbit or, or maybe somewhere in between. Um, an astronaut making the first non-tethered extravehicular activity is shown, and 11 stars are in the background. Well, those 11 stars symbolize the mission's original designation as STS-11. The EVA illustration features the man maneuvering unit, a debuting backpack motor apparatus allowing for much greater freedom of movement. So the names of the five astronauts are below, and you might recognize this style is of Robert McCall, his artwork, famous space artist there. So, and uh, speaking of famous space artists, Marty, I'm wearing a famous space, art, space artist shirt here by Chris Kelly, his rendition of the Gemini 4 spacewalk by Ed White. So, all right, well, more about this STS 61, uh, 41B. Uh, all rookies except Vance Brand making his third flight. There we've got them in space. Okay, you've got uh, Hoot Gibson is the uh, with the mustache, become a five-time uh, shuttle. Uh, I think he become commander after hit this one. Uh, Well-known person Hoot Gibson in the astronaut community, guitarist uh, for the rock band. Uh, Maximum Q of all astronauts. Bruce McCandless is making his first space flight. He would don on that MMU as would Robert Stewart and Ron McNair. And Ron McNair uh, uh, being uh, the second African-American to go to space after Guy Bluford. Um, formerly called STS-11. Got to mention that a little bit. How did it get to be 41B? Well, the four is for the fiscal year 1984. One is launched from Kennedy Space Center. Two is going to be Vandenberg. And B, A, B, C, D, E, sort of the manifest lineup that would be jumbled around as, as things got jumbled around on the payloads and so forth. Uh, so following the STS-9, the numbering system changed, uh, and it was basically because of an accounting procedure that the government accounting office wanted to do to keep track of the fiscal year. So though STS-51L, the fateful Challenger launch, was launched in January 86, it carries the five designation instead of six because it was in the fiscal year of 1985 that goes from October to October in accounting purposes. Well, there's a gorgeous shot of the launch there taken by our good buddy Tom Usiak. Um, could have been his brother Mark. They were both at this from the nine plus uh, seconds into the flight there. I know Tom took this with a remote camera or one, one of the remotes that they have. The UCAC brothers, we appreciate you so much for allowing us to use your images freely. And uh, uh, I try to, to use them and I'm so used to them now, it's hard to tell whose is whose, but they photographed over 60 shuttle launches. There's the famous picture of the untethered spacewalk by Bruce McCandless. Uh, Bruce McCandless was trained almost over three years for this. He actually said he was overtrained for it. He was so ready to do this, uh, but uh, he's left us now. He died a uh, few years ago, but that is an awesome photo. Uh, I think that's Bruce. It could be uh, Stewart, uh, also Bob Stewart, put the pack on and did it. 
And there's the first landing at Kennedy Space Center. And our friend Mark Usiak was there to capture it. Looks like a little bit of fog in the morning there. Um, trying to see if I got the time when it handled. And the first refurbished satellite was carried back into space. The German-built shuttle pallet satellite, SPAS, on this flight. So, very successful flight. There's another just almost wheels down. Nailed it perfectly there, Mark. Uh, is just, is, these uh, early shuttles did not have a parachute on them. That actually first happened on STS-49. Great shot there. I love the mist coming off the the wings and so forth and they're home and just a simple tow over to the orbital processing facility and you can get challenger ready for another flight here is some of the celebration that mark usiak uh, sent us a picture of uh, celebrating the astronauts uh, landing there they had a big to do about it and paraded them up on the uh, platform stage to have some comments so well on black history month we did want to mention that uh three african americans of course paved the way uh left to right is uh, uh ron mcnair and guy bluford and then fred gregory uh fred gregory's a frequent speaker out at the astronaut encounter at kennedy space center visitors complex and i always enjoy fred's talks he talks a lot as Marty well knows about astronomy and the universe and so forth, and not a whole lot about being a commander. He was actually acting uh, director of NASA um, during uh, an interim time there also. There's Ron McNair in space. Wanted to tell you a little bit about this wonderful man who lost his life in the Challenger accident. He was born October 21st, 1950 in Lake city south carolina and when i mention this at our astronaut memorial i always get choked up and tears in my eyes imagine this in the summer of 1959 ron mcnair as a a little boy i think he was eight years old refused well 59 he was born yeah he's nine years old born in 1950 he refused to leave the segregated lake county public library without being allowed to check out his books the police were called, and his, his mother was called, and then the police. Uh, after that, he was allowed to, to, to borrow books from the library. Took the police there to do that. Can you imagine that, 1959? The building that now housed the library at that time is now named after him. There's even a children's book, Ron's Big Mission, which, which, which offers a fictionalized account of this event. And his brother wrote about that in his biography. His brother Carl honored his brother by writing, In the Spirit of Ronald E. McNair, Astronaut and American Hero. Um, North Carolina A&T State University graduate, also MIT for his doctorate degree. In um, Ron, uh, of course, had seven days in space. And he, all, the, all of our... Our deceased astronauts have public honors like you wouldn't believe. Um, buildings. Uh, Ron has a crater on the moon named after him, an asteroid. Uh, but what I, uh, the Lake County Lab uh, Library is now the McNair Life History Center. And uh, numerous schools around our country have been named after McNair from California to, to Maine. And we have one just 20 miles from here. Uh, Ron McNair Elementary School in Rockledge, Florida, uh, just down the road here on Route 1. So we honor you, Ron McNair, on this Black History Month, and we know that you'll never be forgotten for your achievements. There he is. Look at him. He did a, a film up there uh, 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 looking all dapper. He was going to record uh, uh, in space on Challenger the first music in space. I think he was a saxophonist, and uh, it was going to be recorded on a cassette tape, uh, and uh, I didn't get to do that. Well, our next shuttle that was launched on February 3rd is STS-60, the 18th flight of Discovery, launched at 7.10 a.m. on February 3rd, 1994, with the first shuttle flight of a Russian passenger. And uh, 
uh, commander was Charlie Bolden. We'll see some pictures of him here in a minute. But let's talk about that beautiful uh, patch there that uh, includes um, one of our friends that we've just made friends with, Marty. The The design of the crew patch for mission STS-60 depicts the Space Shuttle Discovery's on-orbit configuration. The American and Russian flags symbolize the partnership of the two countries and their crew members taking flight into space together for the first time. This is 1994, all right? Uh, so uh, 30 years ago, the first Russian and American went to space together, and now we have three Russians and uh, two Americans on the space station with uh, uh, JAXA and uh, Sweden up there with us up there. Uh, so 30 years ago, this relationship began, and, and I just talked at lunch with astronaut Jim Adamson, who said the relationship is going strong. How does he know? Because he's on a board with astronaut Tom um, Stafford that talks to their Russian counterparts every month about the relationships of going on uh, that have gone on for 22 years on the International Space Station. The open payload bay contains the space habitation module called Space Hab, flew over 20 times. A commercial uh, space laboratory for life and material science experiments. A getaway special bridge assembly in the aft section carrying various experiments there you see at the end of the bottom of the shuttle there. Both deployable and attached. A scientific experiment to create and measure an ultra vacuum environment and perform semiconductor material in science called the wake shield facility is shown on the remote manipulator arm uh, after deployment so uh, this was a uh, nine uh, eight day mission we have in space there charlie bolden in the center gosh i could have picked a better resolution uh, photo there um, his fourth and last mission uh, uh, he was twice a pilot, twice a commander. Uh, pilot uh, Ken Reitler is on his second and last mission. Uh, Ken would be in the upper right-hand corner there. Uh, you've got Jan Davis on her second of three flights, and we got to meet Jan Davis this week, and it was really a thrill for me. Ron Sega on his first of two flights. Uh, he's in the left-hand corner there. Franklin Chang Diaz, his fourth of seven. He's He's right there beside Charlie. And uh, Sergei Krikalov, the first shuttle flight of a Russian passenger on his third of six flights. Krikalov uh, spent a long time on the, the Mir space station, I think over a year. He is the astronaut, astronauts in, uh, or the cosmonaut, it's cosmonaut in Russia. And he's still very active, uh, not flying, but uh, helping the Russian space agency, Ross Cosmos. Um, there is Charlie Bolden as the NASA administrator. And we will we'll feature Charlie later in the month on Black History Month, but uh, did a great job under the Obama administration taking the Kennedy Space Center and turning it into a multi-use uh, and uh, multi-business for profit facility. There is <laughs> Jan, excuse me, talking at the astronaut encounter that we love going to. Our friend Nick Thomas, who's going to be doing a question and answer, is there on the left. Uh, we'll start promoting Nick Thomas's Q&A on Stay Curious on Monday. He'll be here with us, making myself a note to do that. Um, may you not always reach we may not always reach our goal, but there's recompense in trying. Horizons broaden so much more the higher we are flying. And that uh, Ram, uh, K, uh, Jan Davis, a very patriotic person, uh, born in Cocoa Beach, but grew up in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, we had a great conversation with her, right, Marty? Got any comments about Jan as I show her book here that you're all going to want to buy? Go ahead, Marty. I thought she was very good. I mean, I enjoyed listening to her. She showed, like you know, Mark, she showed a movie, and she talked through the movie, 
and just did an excellent job and it's just very informative and when you talk to her one-on-one -on -one, she's a very outgoing very bubbly very, very interesting person and she certainly is uh of course uh married uh, 30 some years ago to uh Lee, what's Lee's first name? Mark. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Mark. yeah. Markley. How did I forget that? The uh, Markley, and uh, some people are really jerks about asking them about that. But uh, that's that's like you want to talk about your ex from thirty years ago? Heck no. But this book is about her father, who was a uh, aviator in World War II, and a book that they did together in uh, Airborne. Marty, you're a voracious reader. Have you gotten into that book yet? It's next to my queue. Well, what was her father exactly, if you remember? Was he a, on a bomb, bomber? or? Uh, I think it was a bomber. I'm not sure it was a B-52. Not yeah. sure. Well, Jan is quite an outreach person, social media. Sorry for the blurry picture there, but she has a website, a, uh, a Facebook presence on, on uh, X called Twitter. Uh, she has a girls' foundation uh, called, um, uh, I'll, I can't read what that says, but we're going to promote, help promote that a little bit for, uh, and, uh, I think she said like 6,000 girls were affected by her foundation there. So just a great person, Jan Davis. We know that she's going to be involved with our museum because she's reached out to us. She watches stay curious occasionally, uh, particularly when Nick Thomas is on. And she comments occasionally on our Facebook post. So we appreciate you, Jan, uh, sharing your love for space with us here at the American Space Museum. Here are some pictures that uh, uh, Mark or Tom Usiak took of them coming out on the T-38. So there's Jan on the far left, 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 left by, led by Charlie Bolden. Of course, always quite an event when the astronauts come to Kennedy Space Center. They have an impromptu space a prompto press conference with the 30 to 50 media are behind the photographer on this picture. And there's a cool launch from the press site, probably. Mark Usiak, thank you. And lift off. Obviously, it was kind of, what, what was the time? 7, 10 a.m. So on the pad, it looks a lot darker than it does up in the sky there where, where daylight's broken up there. But what a shot that is of just the instant of those SRBs taken off. And that's a second after they blast it off because it only takes about three seconds to clear the tower. And we can't leave Carlton Bailey out, Marty. Here's a picture that CB took in the VAB of Discovery uh, for the STS-63 flight, our third mission of the shuttle that launched on February 3rd. This was Discovery's uh, 20th flight. We're going to look at the patch on that now. And of course, the book that I favor is this NASA book by Aero Graphics. Let me give it to you there. It's sold at bookstores everywhere, human space flight. Uh, many of you've got astronaut autographs in this book. This one is a very special mission. The patch depicts the orbiter maneuvering to rendezvous with the Russian space station Mir, uh, uh, printed in Cyrillic on the side of the station. M-I-R, M-U-P is Mir, okay. Uh, when you see a P in Russia, I know that's always the R. Visible in the orbiter payload bay are the Commercial Space Laboratory Space Hab and the Spartan Satellite which are the major payloads on the flight. The six points on the rising sun and the three stars form mission number 63. Hmm, never thought of it that way. The United States and Russian flags at the bottom of the patch symbolize the cooperation of these two countries. Again, two missions, Russia, America, uh, flying together in space, both launched on February 3rd, uh, one in 1984. This one, 11 years later in 1985, going to the uh, Mir space station. Now, this was a big mission with, uh, in, the pilot, in the commander's seat was Jim Weatherby, his third of six space flights. Let's look at the launch here before we get to the crew. Again, a UCAC, Mark Usiak photo. Uh, love the reflections in the water there. 
Uh, all this structure, of course, was torn down. Uh, is this pad 39A or B? Uh, I'd have to consult the scroll for that. It looks like A. Mar Marty says looks like A. Okay. We'll go with that. You can tell by the water probably around it there. And um, the launch was at 12.22 a.m. on February 3rd, just after midnight, 1995. And the first female in the pilot seat, Eileen Collins, was on her first of four space flights. And there's the crew in space. Um, Michael Fole was the first United Kingdom-born person to go to space. Uh, his third is six flights. Uh, Michael, he's on. The, he's right there beside me. Uh, uh, African American Bernard Harris there is on his second and last flight. And then you've got Janice Voss, her second of five flights. She's on the left, and uh, and the second Russian to fly in sight of shuttles beside her, uh, Vladimir Titov. <clears throat> and then you've got Weatherby and Eileen Collins in the back. Now, Jan Davis, five beautiful space flights, and she lost her life to cancer. How how just unfair is that? Uh, and uh, but um, and we want to talk just a little bit about uh, Eileen Collins, the first of her four space flights, twice as a pilot and tw twice as a commander, America's, the world's first commander of a, of a spaceship, still has, a, that's a woman. Uh, she and Pam Melroy are the only women who have been commanders of spaceships. So I take that back. You're all going to be beating me up on that. Uh, Jasmine Mogali the commander of her spaceship, Crew Dragon. And um, we had uh, Nicole Mann, I think, was commander of a Crew Dragon space flight. So uh, that's a uh, uh, four women, all American, have commanded space flights. Uh, but of course, Eileen's a very, very special person if you've ever met her. And I've had the privilege of meet her many times. And there she is with Jonathan Ward on the uh, space flight there. Marty, what you got there? 39B. Oh, it's 39B. Okay, it is B, the pad out there. Thanks for checking that. Uh, and Jan Davis's dad flew a B-17, uh, Marty says. So that's pretty cool. Not a B-52, an old B-17 bomber. There is the book that these pair did together through this glass ceiling to the stars. The story of Eileen Collins. And she's just a uh, Marty. Nothing but nice words for her. She's been involved with Marty's Grumman reunion, the last one they had. And uh, my gosh, you wouldn't know all the 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 fear and faith and 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 training that this woman's gone through by talking to her. Uh, she uh, she's one of these astronauts that asks you more about yourself. Uh, what are you doing? Where do you live? Where'd you grow up? Right, Marty? She's just awesome. And there she is with Jonathan Ward. Jonathan's second book he did with Mike Lineback, Bringing Columbia Home. Uh, had been a friend of this museum a long time. And guess what? We're so proud of you, Jonathan and Eileen, that they're turning this book into a documentary that's going to be called Space Woman. And uh, I'll get you the details on that documentary on a Stay Curious in the future. But uh, there's a picture taken by the famous rock photographer Annie Leibowitz. You have your photo made by Annie Leibowitz. You have made it, my friend. So I'm sure, you know, this was just blasé to, to this wonderful woman. But a uh, cool picture of her in this documentary is going to be called Space Woman based on that book. Well, let's look at what the Space Woman also went up to space with Bernard Harris. We featured Bernard Harris a little bit. Well, I know. I wanted to get back to this one picture. Uh, we were talking about Eileen. But she piloted uh, with Weatherby the first encounter with the Mir space station. And that was, I, I meant to load this picture up. Uh, I love this picture. This is an astronaut on the Mir They did not dock with it, okay. But this is an astronaut on the, a very famous picture taken from this space shuttle mission. And look at that astronaut looking out, the cosmonaut looking out at, at the space shuttle orbiting around them. All right. Haven't seen many pictures of that shuttle around there. 
but um, uh, what a cool picture. Pokolov is that cosmonaut's name who was up there. And we got my phone ringing for the second time uh, in two days there. I guess I'll have to learn to turn it over. But I, I love that picture. That is just an amazing picture there. Hope he's wearing his sunscreen, right? Uh, they're looking at the unfiltered uh, solar rays. Let's look at, let's talk about a little bit about uh, that 63 um, was, they did not dock. They, they wanted to uh, uh, check out the, all the orbital mechanics, make sure they could get up there and then did an inspection around the mirror. And then uh, the next time we went up, uh, we docked with the mirror space station. My brain's not good enough to remember which mission that was. But we want to talk about uh, on that mission also was African-American Bernard Harris. Bernard Harris uh, did a spacewalk. There we go. Let's go forward there. There's Bernard. Um, he grew up in Temple, Texas, uh, the first African-American to perform an extravehicular spacewalk. And uh, that was on, his, on this flight, STS-63. And there he is getting ready to do that. Uh, and he's a, a medical doctor from the Mayo Clinic. And uh, we talked about him the other day that his Harris Foundation in Houston, Texas, is all about underprivileged inner city kids of any color, helping them go to summer camps. And his uh, mantra, if, if he has one, uh, Bernard Harris says, prepare our kids now for jobs that don't exist today. And I really like that message because Marty had a job that didn't exist when he was a kid. And all you space workers on the shuttle, same thing. You had a job that nobody knew was going to be a job back in the day. So we're happy to celebrate our space shuttles every month with you. If you have an anecdote that you think I should share, please do. But we're grateful to Mark and Tom Usiak uh, for their photographs and also for their financial contribution from time to time. Uh, to American Space Museum, including buying me a meal once in a while, right, Marty, when they're in town. And we know they'll be in town for Shuttle Fest coming up April 13th. So, well, we wanted to go out on this uh, Stay Curious program today with Apollo 14 headed back from the moon 53 years ago with 95 pounds of booty from that red location right there. You see the full moon just kind of looked at a little bit of the left. That's the Fraw Marrow era, area there. And you can see they wanted to land there because the Apollo 11 and 12, actually Apollo 12 landed in just to the left of it in the dark sea, the Maria. Of course, it's a, it's a lava, frozen lava plain. And Apollo um, 11 landed uh, on uh, about in the middle on the, in the where the uh, other c is i can't point to it there but this was the first landing yeah a little bit to the right apollo 11 right right on the edge of that sea there marty there right in there right in, a little bit more and apollo 11's right in there apollo 12 is to the left of apollo 14 where 13 was going to land so it's the first one to land in the light area of the lunar regolith and it was different in fact it was older material about four billion years old compared to the three to three and a half billion years old material that's in the lunar maria which makes sense that was ejected out of the crater copernicus that's bright up above it there's our astronauts no longer with us alan shepherd the commander in the middle uh, edgar mitchell on the right Stu rose on the left uh, basically an all rookie crew that did a very good mission and and overcome some obstacles along the way including the docking hatch that was malfunctioning in Earth orbit. There's a cool picture of them in the, uh, maybe the flight crew training building. It's in, or in their simulator room in Houston as they would uh, get, get in there and practice the landings and all the things they have to do. Lem number eight there on the lunar module. Lem number nine, you can see at the Kennedy Space Center Saturn V complex, because though that was in the queue to be used for Apollo 15, it wasn't adaptable for the lunar rover. So Lem nine, though completely built by Marty Winkle and his Grumman buddies, uh, you can see the real deal there. And when Marty's with you, I learn something every time about that vehicle. And 
We featured it already on a couple of state curiouses. Then it'd be lem number 10 that would be go to Apollo 15 uh, and do a three day camp out on the mountain. All that's left of this mission hardware is expect to say space suits and a few trinkets maybe and the 95 pounds of rocks are the Kitty Hawk was the name of the uh, command module. The lunar module was called Antares. And Kitty Hawk does look pretty cool. I've seen it many times and never tire of seeing it up close and personal like you can get it there. But, uh, of course, the astronauts trained with a rickshaw type of uh, vehicle, uh, a, a cart to the right there to put their equipment on and had a camera on it. And they would practice, I understand, just outside the... Um, uh, um, where would they be? Manned opera, uh, yeah. Mokar? No, that that's uh, M MSOB. The MSOB. Yeah. Manned o and C spacecraft Something. operations building. You MSOB. But Marty, what do you notice in this picture besides the autographs of Alan Shepard and Edgar Mitchell? Well, there's some people out there without spacesuits. Yeah. Well, how about in the foreground, an armadillo oh, yeah. <laughs> digging in the ground there? It looks like they got a, a miniature baseball in there, uh, uh, in, in the uh, the cup there to scoop up, the scoop there. But yeah, there's an armadillo during the uh, photographing of that there. And somehow I think Carlton Bailey's connected with this. Either CB got this autographed or something on there. He'll tell me about it later. Gary Gerald, I know that you're interested in that armadillo there as he sees all kinds of critters around his farm in Collins, Georgia. Dave Stangy, no armadillos up there in Michigan, buddy. And Steve Jokums, hope that you're staying warm up there at the Lake County Spaceport. Uh, but uh, we wanted to uh, brag about uh, uh, Doug Forrest here. I know I see Doug Forrest, name's watching. We talk about Doug, he watches almost every week. Every day, I mean. And there is some of the artwork of our friend Doug Forrest. Should have shown it yesterday when this event actually happened 53 years ago. Alan Shepard taking the shaft of one of these instruments here that they're playing around with. Put a, uh, a Spalding six iron on the end of it and uh, mashed uh, two McGregor uh, balls, uh, two of them on the lunar surface and that is Doug Forrest and there's Doug's pretty face there at the Endeavor uh, mating with the ET tank out there in Los Angeles California last Monday um, early in the Monday morning I guess it was Doug thank you for watching stay curious Cliff Watson in Pomona Australia now you know what Cliff looks like so does Tom selling Tom now you know what Doug looks like I mean so does Tom, Tom Celentano in Connecticut. Mark Usiak's watching. Cynthia Rossi, thank you, young lady. And Bill Whiting. Was Bill out there with you today, Marty? He sure was. What was he getting signed? I'll bet he's getting his Tom Jones book edited by uh, <laughs> by Charlie Walker. Right? Exactly. That's just what he did, and so did Connie McDaniels. Okay. Yes, Tom Jones' wonderful book, Space Shuttle Stories, has a error in it uh, on uh, the last flight of Charlie Walker's. It doesn't acknowledge Charlie as being a uh, previous space participant. And in fact, Charlie had more time in space than his commander, Brewster Shaw. <laughs> uh, uh, he's kind of got, and I would too, a little ticked off about that. But uh, look at this artwork, pencil. What a master he is at that. We appreciate all that you do uh, to promote our museum there, Doug Forrest, in that picture right there. So, Marty, thank you for another Streamlabs job here. And speaking on the microphone there, here's our doors that we want to keep open. And we appreciate your support any way you can. Watching the show is the best, is a great way to support it there. So you can see, because um, it is monetized. I think we're making about $7 a month now, Marty. Yeah. Almost, uh, uh, well, I, that ain't even half lunch money anymore. Uh, maybe half of a of a cheap breakfast somewhere. So, well, glad that you all stayed with me to spend some time here on Stay Curious. Uh, 
again, a great job there, Marty. Anything we need to button up? Nope, we're looking good. Well, thank you, everybody, for accepting my rambling ways. There's my Hot Wheels with my my uh, Tesla that's orbiting the sun. Launched six years ago today on the first Falcon 9. And uh, looking back on that, it, that means I've been involved with this museum uh, well over six years. And, and I'm very grateful of that. So until tomorrow, when we crank it up and do it again, I'm Mark Marquette saying... Come and visit our museum and bridge the space between us. Thank you all, folks.